And I'll get the panel in the wind-up to comment on that. Uh, there's another question there. Good morning. My name is uh, Baines. Um, I had one question, and apologies if this has been addressed. I, um, I missed part of the session. But how would you s ideally fit this type of initiative into something like the European uh, IGF, which the uh, European Parliament uh, has been supporting uh, over the last year, and which has seen a couple of initiatives quite recently? A very good question. Uh, any other? I'll take that second question, if I may, and ask Alan to comment on it, if you wouldn't mind. Yes, I, I, th I think it's something of a disappointment that our colleagues from the European Parliament are not here. Uh, it gives me the opportunity to say again it wasn't their choice. Uh, it was apparently the Commission that pulled the rug on them travelling here. But last year we had a, a very useful interchange between members of the uh, British Parliament and members of the European Parliament uh, uh, at a very early stage of some of the developments that uh, you're, uh, you're referring to. Uh, and I know they very much wanted to be here. I think, frankly, uh, there is no conflict between looking at things that relate between uh, internet-related issues at a European level and other business, uh, regulatory, uh, and uh, governmental issues at a European level, and making sure that we have an approach that's right at the UK level. I think that, uh, actually, both at a national level uh, through things like the UK IGF and other initiatives in other countries. I know France has an initiative, for instance, and so on. Uh, and uh, indeed, at a sub-national level, uh, I referred to the Wales E-Crime Forum and the, uh, the business initiative in, in Yorkshire. These things are all able to feed up uh, and uh, provide the lifeblood of practical experience uh, from... Uh, a, a, a national, local, and even European level into the work of the IGF. Because if the IGF is basically a bunch of people sitting around being theoretical, which is how we started, uh, that's an inevitable starting point, uh, then it will become less and less valuable over time. The more we're actually uh, addressing our experience, whether it be ours or the experience in Holland or the experience across Europe, and feeding in and listening to what the experience is in other, other parts of the world, the more we will uh, firstly take good experience back home, but secondly, be able to build up a consensus view uh, about best practice uh, on, on a worldwide level. So I don't see any uh, conflict or competition uh, between a UK and a European level. I simply think we need to make sure the mechanisms are there uh, for us to learn from each other. Any other questions? Well, I don't want to prolong the seminar unnecessarily, so uh, yes, please. Uh, Martin Ball asked earlier about uh, other national initiatives uh, that are taking place. There is, in fact, a workshop uh, tomorrow morning um, at uh, 9.30 uh, in room 7, and this is about national multi-stakeholder processes and their relation uh, to the IGF. Um, the UK uh, will be there, um, as will also somebody from the East Africa uh, Internet Governance Forum and somebody from the West Africa Internet Governance Forum uh, and people also talking about initiative uh, within Europe. Uh, so I think that this, uh, for the person who is interested in that sort of relationship and what we can learn from one another, uh, certainly from the UK, we have learnt... Um, uh, seen that what they're doing in East Africa if of the national fora feeding into the regional fora to collect and make their voices more powerful is an exceptionally good lesson for us and how perhaps we might be able to make a European IGF process considerably more effective. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, First, and I'll just go along the table. I'm not going to sum up. I'm just going to say the comment regarding the, uh, I think it was a reference to an e-council that our colleague from the Netherlands made, uh, we'll, we will simply pinch your idea. So I'll come and uh, take, take that information out of your brain. Uh, and perhaps we can uh, do something with that in parallel with an online participation with children to ensure that we get the widest possible 
uh, feedback from young children and young people. But it leads me on to one comment about the IGF process itself, which we perhaps need to learn at a local, uh, local and a national level. Here we are, um, and I'm certainly an old fogue. You are all much younger, but I don't see any young people in this process at all, and yet here we are talking about their future. And as has been mentioned, they know more about the technology and the different ways of use, abuse, and otherwise of using of the technology than we will ever know, certainly than I will ever know. Uh, and I do think that maybe there's a lesson for the IGF here in terms of involving young people in some of these discussions in some shape or form. And I certainly think there's an opportunity uh, for uh, to walk for the IGF to walk the talk in terms of wider participation and thinking about an e-participation initiative for the next IGF, particularly with young people, but more, more widely. Emily? Uh, thank you. Sometimes the IGF is derided as a talk shop, and of course it has no decision-making powers, and so what are people to do except to talk, or perhaps listen as well? Um, I think if we get it right, then the IGF can be a more, less a talk shop and more a think tank. And this is where I think uh, processes like the UK example uh, can help, can contribute. But this is not about telling people how to do things or what to do. It is about expecting there to be differences, expecting there to be plurality of views, situations, and other uh, factors that will contribute to the diversity that we see uh, both on the, in the world and in, on the internet. Peter, if I could just pick up uh, in closing your point, what could the European IGF learn? Uh, uh, I think that we, it can learn from the East African project, as Martin has said, and, and perhaps look at transforming from a series of meetings to more of a process that is punctuated by get-togethers, which is what I hope the international dialogue can become as well. Jeremy? Thank you. I mean, I think one of the things that's very interesting about this process is that one of the things the internet did was enable um, new communities uh, to form sort of horizontally in that they were shared communities of interest across the world um, that in a sense cut across national um, uh, boundaries. Now, th and that's good and important and interesting, but uh, in a sense the those communities have stayed, in a sense, separated from the national communities. And I think one of the advantages of forming national IGFs is that it gives, makes those communities more rounded and brings the debates that they have back into the national arena so that politicians, for instance, learn about the internet and the communities and vice versa. It gives it a, the, the whole debate more rounded uh, perspective. And then that helps bring up to the international IGF, the one we're here at, um, these practical learning experiences that people can bring to their national uh, context. And I think that could be very valuable as a way of going forward in the sort of way that um, the other speakers have indicated. Alan? Um, firstly, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Uh, and I think we're about flattering people by seizing their ideas and we hope that people will, will seize ours. And we hope then that we can compare notes on uh, what's been effective and why there have been uh, successes. Uh, and that, that should be one of the great strengths of the IGF uh, process. Uh, let's accept that it's early days yet. Uh, I mean, we're three years into the uh, uh, IGF mandate. That's very early for the development of something that isn't a straightforward, top-down, organizational, easy win. It's about relationships, it's about building confidence, it's about mutual exchanges. Um, we're used to dealing with crime, if you look at the, uh, the real world, the offline world, uh, by in two ways, either expecting the police to deal with it, uh, or alternatively saying, uh, as, as you said, uh, Ian, earlier, there ought to be a law against it. Uh, and I'm very fond uh, of the statement that laws rarely prevent what they forbid. Uh, we need to make sure that what we do is fit for purpose in terms of creating a, a safer internet so that we can exploit all the opportunities that, uh, that it provides. And I think Margaret's point earlier uh, was very well
well made. So I think the big question is, uh, how can we deal with all the issues in relation to the internet? The answer surely is to harness the skills and the expertise of industry uh, with the message that uh, every new business initiative ought to look at how it can be used safely at the point of design because that's the way to avoid regulation. Um, and secondly, that through a partnership we can do more together than we can alone. Uh, I suppose what I'm saying there is that all that is required for the triumph of evil on the internet is that people of goodwill shall allow the crooks to get on with it. Uh, all that's required to, uh, to combat that is to ensure that we work together effectively. Well, Alan's nickname now is probably Oscar Wilde. <laughs> um, and finally, Andrew. Just to uh, answer the, the, the very first question, how, how do you do it? It was a kind in the way you, you put it. I mean, I hope we've demonstrated that uh, our success is significantly down to a team approach. Uh, I strongly believe that in this area of uh, the collision between the uh, strength and the rapid changes in technology, that a top-down approach from any government can never work. If you think of areas like ICT, like uh, uh, genetics, like uh, uh, aerospace issues, uh, you, you simply cannot evolve uh, uh, and keep up with the fastest in the world by imposing everything uh, top down. And um, coming on to Peter's uh, uh, observation about the European dimension, um, we, we should not only argue against the top down approach, but we should argue against uh, uh, being rigid about boundaries because, after all, technology doesn't know boundaries. Um, um, so we should be working within here, the United Nations, the, Interna uh, uh, the International Parliamentary Union, the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, the European Union. All of the uh, regional and international bodies need to be engaged in this. And look at the positives. I mean, I've just come from a seminar on, on, on climate change and seen some work being done in Nepal, uh, which is stunningly I interesting, um, uh, relating to dealing with a, a, a downside of what we, the human race, have done to the planet um, in a very positive way. We're, we're looking at things like that. We're looking at, uh, there was an item on, on the news this morning, a uh, uh, BBC uh, a piece, uh, uh, an operation conducted in the DRC uh, and the instructions to the surgeon were given by text message. I think it's, it's just mind-blowing the potential um, we have here. Um, we touched on elderly people. Uh, my, my, my mother always comes into this. She's 88, lives on her own and is reliant upon the internet to enable her to remain in her home where she wants to then we have some one or two downsides, like uh, we noticed from poor Kevin uh, up at some ungodly hour, and uh, uh, I got uh, a phone call this morning at two o'clock from my whip, who, who thought it was appropriate to phone me uh, on, on the basis of his clock. So there are a few downsides that we need to deal with, but let's be really positive about the good news stories and celebrate the things that are going around, share this be best practice, uh, and... Uh, uh, drive forward things uh, with uh, confidence that uh, there is enough goodwill in this conference and throughout the industry and uh, most governments around the world to really uh, improve society for the better. Well, thank you very much, all of you. Uh, you've just had a session uh, with a British panel modestly trying to say what we do uh, as part of our best practice. Uh, and I hope that it's inspired you to do the same things or to be even better. And perhaps at the next intergovernmental conference, we'll find out some of the things that are going on in other countries that we can uh, adapt to. Uh, France, uh, frankly, what is so important is that we do it for ourselves. We work collaboratively. You've got two former government ministers on this panel, Alan and myself, and yet we're saying don't just rely on the government. Uh, the intergovernmental uh, aspect of this is also important, but the Internet Governance Forum also brings in other actors, industry, uh, NGOs, civil society, and actually 
amongst those and parliamentarians, we have to find a way forward to make the internet the force for good, which all of us actually believe it is. Now, those of you who stuck it out to the bitter end have got a real bonus, because Nominet uh, have got some goodies over there, and I can see de-stress cushions, and I can see mini mouses, or mini mices, uh, for your laptop computers, which are really good, by the way, uh, and a bag, which is environmentally friendly. So on the basis that you get something for nothing, you've now got the goodies to go with the panel, uh, but thank you very much indeed for attending, and thank you to all the panelists. Give them a round of applause.